Hi everyone! This is a side project that I've been slowly tinkering with on and off for about three years now. It recently came to completion, so I thought I'd make a video about it. Now, that completion was abject failure, unfortunately, but hopefully this will still be interesting. This was my attempt to make a valved pulse jet that uses poppet valves instead of pedal valves or reed valves. This is something that I've wanted to try for a really long time, because I've been fascinated by pulse jets for quite a while. Um, here's a terrible little valveless pulse jet that I made like seven years ago. The really amazing thing about pulse jets is how absurdly simple they are. A valveless pulse jet has no moving parts and doesn't need any precision at all to make. A valved pulse jet is a little bit more complicated, but is still incredibly simple compared to any other engine. Um, the fact that you can make a useful amount of thrust with something that you made with tin snips and a welder is just amazing to me. Pulse jets are really, really incredible. So you might be wondering why pulse jets are so rarely used, and the answer comes down to their terrible fuel consumption. Pulse jets don't actually have any compression at all. A fun fact is that they use the Lenoir cycle, which is the same cycle as the very first internal combustion engines, so their fuel consumption is hilariously bad. A typical valveless pulse jet will require approximately 5 pounds of fuel per pound of thrust per hour. Um, valved pulse jets are quite a bit more efficient than this. They typically have a thrust specific fuel consumption of about 2.5. Um, for reference, uh, the thrust specific fuel consumption for a turbojet is typically between 1.5 and 1, and the thrust specific fuel consumption for a turbofan is normally about 0.5. So pulse jets are extremely thirsty engines compared to normal jets. There are a couple ways you can increase this efficiency, and the biggest one is a thrust augmenter. Um, a thrust augmenter is basically an afterburner in reverse. It introduces fresh air that burns unburned propellant. Um, a valved pulse jet with a thrust augmenter could get um, its thrust specific fuel consumption down to about 1.75, um, and a valveless pulse jet could get down to about 3.5. Um, there's also some other things you could do, like timed fuel injection, but the, the biggest increase in efficiency comes from adding a thrust augmenter. Since a valved pulse jet with a thrust augmenter has a pretty close thrust specific fuel consumption to a really early turbojet, you might be starting to think that they have some promise. But valved pulse jets have a really big problem, and that's the lifetime of their valves. The frequency that pulse jets operate at is actually really high. Uh, the V1 operated at about 40 hertz, and the smaller you go, the higher it gets. So for a pulse jet that generates 100 pounds of thrust, you could expect it to be anywhere from 120 to 80 hertz. Um, this really high frequency results in the little sheet metal valves uh, stress hardening and cracking very quickly. Um, they typically only last between 20 minutes and an hour. My plan for getting around this was to replace the reed valves with the poppet valve, which increases durability a lot. There are some reasons why this hasn't been done before though. Uh, poppet valves are a whole lot heavier than reed valves, and the conventional wisdom is that there's just way too much inertia for the weak vacuum of a pulse jet to pull it open. Um, I made mine out of titanium, and I was hoping that this would lighten it up enough for it to work, but unfortunately it wasn't in the end. So to test out this idea, I decided to make a quick and dirty prototype. Um, my goal for thrust was 100 pounds with a thrust augmenter. Um, so without a thrust augmenter, it's designed to have about 65 pounds of thrust. Um, the combustion chamber and the tailpipe I plasma cut out of some 16 gauge steel, and the cylinder head and the flanges are made out of 3 16 steel. You may have noticed a plate sticking out of the head of the pulse jet, and that's because I planned to switch from propane to gasoline, and I was too lazy to build an atomizer, so my plan was to just use an automotive carburetor. Um, this pulse jet, if it had worked, would have needed about 300 CFM of air, so this Holly 2 barrel would have been perfect. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it now, now that this uh, pulse jet didn't work out, but um, that was the plan. The titanium valve was by far the hardest part to make, and it's the reason why this took me three years to finish. Um, liquid titanium burns when it's exposed to air, so casting wasn't an option. Um, 
if I were to try uh, machining it from a billet, I would need a billet that cost a thousand dollars and 90% of that material would be wasted as chips, so that wasn't an option either. Um, my initial plan was to buy roughly the volume of titanium that I needed and then forge it into roughly the shape of the valve and then machine it from there so that way I wouldn't waste any material. I tried doing this on my own and I couldn't get it to work. So I then took it to a professional blacksmith who also couldn't get it to work. Um, it, the titanium just cracked instantly. Uh, so in the end, what I ended up having to do was um, weld a valve sim onto a disc of titanium and uh, then machine it from there. This was my least favorite option because I was really worried about the weld breaking, but in the end, this was the only method that worked. Machining titanium turned out to be a very interesting experience. I was expecting to have difficulties, but I ran into much different difficulties than I was expecting to. Um, I had thought I would have a lot of issues with the uh, material retaining a lot of heat, but I really didn't. Um, what I did have difficulty with was cutting the titanium with high-speed steel. I had read that you could do it, but I couldn't get it to work, um, although that's probably down to my complete lack of machining experience. Um, I, I could only cut it using carbide tools, and uh, since I didn't have access to a carbide parting tool, I actually had to part it with an angle grinder and then clean it up on the lathe. Um, Welding titanium? I was expecting to be difficult, but it was actually really easy. Um, I just cleaned it with alcohol and it welded just like steel, really. The valve seat was really simple by comparison. I just machined it out of bearing bronze. The valve guide and the valve seat and the head were misaligned a little bit, of course, which I was expecting because welding together the head wasn't exactly a precision operation. Uh, so to correct for this, I just lapped the valve a lot. It took like three hours, but eventually it sealed quite nicely. Once I finally had the pulse jet finished and got to start testing it, there were two big problems that appeared. Uh, the first and more minor problem is that it wouldn't run without an external source of air like an air compressor or a leaf blower, uh, but the big problem is it would only run if the valve was pushed open, so it was basically acting like a really terrible valveless pulse jet. I removed the valve spring and this problem continued. Um, eventually I put my hand on the valve stem and sort of pulled it around trying to feel for vibrations and I couldn't feel any force uh, trying to pull the valve open or closed. Um, it didn't even seem close to working which was really disappointing. The propane tank that I was using didn't have a regulator and was opened all the way. And I've also seen videos of people running pulse jets of a similar size on just one tank. So this really shouldn't have been a fuel supply issue. Um, letting in a little more air by cutting some hole more holes in the head uh, may help, but judging by how far it was from working, I don't think this would be enough to fix it. Um, another thing I've been thinking about trying is removing some more material from the valve, but again, I, I don't think this would really be enough. So the conclusion of this experiment is that the conventional wisdom is 100% correct. Um, it looks like poppet valves are simply too heavy to work in a pulse jet. Although this ended up being a complete failure, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed having an excuse to work with titanium a bit, and testing the engine really rekindled my love of pulse jets. I'm probably done with valved pulse jets for a while, but this really made me want to build a big valveless Lockwood style engine and use it for a very fun and airplane related use. <laughs> I don't have nearly enough time to do that right now though, so it'll probably be years and years before I'm able to. Maybe one day though.